Hello, it is Kat. And this is Coatsy Day. And this, and this is, is the Coatsy Cat Chat. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Was that better the second time? I don't know. <laughs> We're getting so close. We're getting so close. We're, so we're close. able to leave it there because we're so human and I love it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. How are you doing today, Kat? I am. Well, it is Friday for me, so it is weekend. Yes. Super excited. Yes. And I've got a um, stream tonight too, so. Woot. Oh yeah. We got to wrap it up. I forgot about that. Um, oh, we got like so two busy. and a half hours. We're good. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh man, now we got to get going. <laughs> we're gonna be talking about games, right? That's what yes. we're gonna be talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of what I'm streaming tonight, we are talking about what we're playing and starting with Critter Cove. Um, I'll be streaming Critter Cove yes. tonight. By the time this goes live, I'll have already streamed it, so you can go watch that vod. Mm -hmm. But Coatsy, I think you're also playing Critter Cove as well. Yeah. Um, I have played uh, a. A few episodes of it actually um a few live streams of it uh i did a video of it first um that released uh i think sunday or monday the day before it came out and then i did two more days of it um after that and it's been a lot of fun it's been a lot of fun i really appreciate the devs <laughs> at critter Cove, like the developers of critter Cove, because they were so kind in the way that they opened the door for even tiny content creators like me to be able to stream it prior to its official release. Um, so that's been really, really neat. Right. You said this but, was your first, um, your first dev. Um, yeah, it's, it was the first key from a dev that I have gotten at all. Like that is, I will never forget Critter Cove, um, the team at, now I have to pause and look this up because I'm, I'm a terrible person, and I forgot what the dev team was. <laughs> I hear you googling. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to the Steam page. I'm going to the Steam page. Gentleman Rat Studios. How did I not remember that? My gosh, it's like the single one I didn't put in on my notes. <laughs> yeah, I thought you had put all those in for your it's notes. The single one I didn't do. <laughs> Golly, I can tell by my email because <laughs> I was like. I know you said no matter how small, but if I am too small, like that's okay, like and everything. And they sent it to me. So I guess it they were true to their word. They were like, no matter how small. <laughs> did they send it to you or did you reach out to them? Like how did how is that for you? Cause I, I think this is like a really interesting look at like small versus like a larger content creator. I guess not like I don't you know, know if not I would like call you, myself like, larger. I am like you're significantly larger than me though yes. yes yeah so critter cove it's like an open world creature collab like i'd call it them and it's really fun i'd call Go it post post-apocalyptic uh animal crossing yes oh my gosh that would be spot mm -hmm. on that's like on the nose i um, played the demo for it and i really loved it so i'm pretty jazzed to, to stream it tonight I I'm blown away by how, how beautifully like put together the graphics are mm -hmm. like just the water and the colors. Everything is just beautifully done. Like I, I am so blown away and it doesn't run poorly on my laptop, which is what I stream and run a game on. Editing cat here. I'm so sorry. There was an issue with the audio and I ended up losing most of our conversation about Critter Cove and then we go into talking about Chef RPG and I lost the first bit of that as well, but it's going to continue on from there. So we're talking about Chef RPG. Dishes in your restaurant that you were given charge of by, I guess, a mentor, um, Chef Casto, and you make your, you know, you're trying to like revitalize this restaurant. That's always a theme, right? With yeah. these games is you're trying to revitalize something. <laughs> something has fallen into disrepair or dereliction and you're trying to now like bring it, breathe life into it. And um, there are over 240 like uh, recipes already included in the game. There are 20 
important NPCs, like romance, like I think romanceable NPCs, mm-hmm. and then there are thirty minor NPCs on top of that. Wow! And they're and when they say it's a dense, semi-open world, like it is, it is dense, unless you start in winter, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> I did. So I. I started playing this game and I streamed it and I did all the wrong things. So if you want to see how to play Chef RPG on hard mode, you go watch my streams and my videos for Chef RPG. But you can pick the season you start? You can pick the season. Isn't that such a cool mechanic? Yeah. Like, I love that. That, Okay, so, and and I, yes, you can pick what season you move in. And I love that. That's such like a small but refreshing mechanic to be able to choose the season that you come in on the game on because you don't move always in spring. Like life doesn't always happen in spring where you have to uproot your life. And so I love that like really simple but refreshing mechanic. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing Um, the trend now with the huge cast of characters. Yes. Like gone are the days of twelve NPCs with four romanceable characters. It's like eighty, and then twenty. Yeah, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, I. So I'll I'll be honest. I actually um, I feel a little overwhelmed by it. Honestly, I oh, haven't yeah. felt overwhelmed by a game in so long. I didn't even feel overwhelmed with Sunhaven, which is weird because it had way more in it. But I think it's because of where I started, in part. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like I'm missing a lot. Um, because there's no foraging. To there's speak no of, really. foraging? Because I started in winter. Oh, Everything's right. Because you started in winter. I was going <laughs> to say, there's no foraging winter. in the game. Everything's makes no dead. sense. It's no, winter. No, no, no. There's, so a, you... there's an absolute like metric ton of <laughs> foraging oh, in the wow. game. wow. I wonder if the devs will um, do something to balance that out. I mean, it says it in the seasons. I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally like expose myself here. <laughs> I oh, was a dumb so you nut, knew. and I was like way <laughs> too stoked. No, I was way too stoked and didn't even see it. Um, <laughs> they give you descriptions of each season when you look at it when you're starting your season, and it's like there's all this in you know, spring, summer, uh, fall, and then you get to winter, and it's like it's frozen. Nothing's growing. There's limited hunting. And that I just, my brain just completely glossed over it. Didn't even, didn't even register. And then on top of that, you get a specialty that you get to pick. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you specialize in making meat dishes, fish dishes, et cetera, so on and so forth. Well, I had to choose a um, mixologist, <laughs> which requires a lot of fruit and herbs. Yeah. I was going to say it requires, <laughs> would be alcohol, right? Alcohol, fruit, and herbs. <laughs> mm-hmm. None in the of middle which of winter? you start with in winter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm telling you, I went hard mode on it, like, right out the gate, like, <laughs> a total dumb nut. And um, it's, like, a whole joke now, every time, like, with the streams and everything. And um, that would have been funny. funny. It's pretty bad. If you got, like, a pop-up yeah. box that was, like, are you sure? Are you I really, know, really right? sure? <laughs> You know you picked winter, right? Oh, gosh. I know, (laughs) right? It'd be so funny. Um, But yeah, I've, I mean, it's given me, (laughs) it's definitely giving me information to like when people ask me, oh, is this game good? Well, yes, even in winter, it's good. (laughs) You know, like it's, it's, it's fun even in winter. I do think there needs to be some rebalancing with the fishing. Mm. I I like the mechanic. I like the mini game the game that they have going, but the level of difficulty to catch a fish, you're only catching like two out of eight, maybe. Ooh. Maybe even one out of eight. It's the rod is just not strong enough. Like you can't up your skill. Like it's I think it's too difficult right now. I feel like and... fishing is one of those mechanics in cozy games that is so hard to get right. It really is. Well, and I love a fishing mechanic. Like, it, Same. if anybody knows me, like, I love a fishing mechanic. Like, we both adored Ever After Falls. Mm-hmm. Like, fell in love with it. I love Sturdy Valley's fishing mechanic. I love mm-hmm. um, Roots of Pacha's fishing mechanic. 
Like, and those are all so different. All of them are completely different. And I 100%. love them all. They're so much fun. They're so much fun. And I would love this one if it were well balanced, but I don't right now. I don't oh. have any clue how to up my skill with it. I don't have any clue how to get a better rod um, or who to go to for that. Well, at least it's um, early think, access, so there's still hope. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I think I think it's definitely going to be one of those things on their agenda. And I think mm -hmm. that's part of what early access is for. Like, it's partly for the testing, you yeah. know, like with a broader audience. It really should be done in alpha and beta, but it's kind of morphed into, like, beta has kind of morphed into early access. I don't think it should, but it has. Mm -hmm. And... um you're getting a lot of um, feedback that like, that's what the devs are counting on. They're counting on a lot of feedback for adjustment and they're counting on the money, like the influx of income to keep the, keep the game going, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it's, I'm almost certain it's going to get rebalanced. Or that something's going to happen where you can upgrade, they'll figure it out. And I think the way that you upgrade, I have a suspicion it's with the fishermen and you have to have like a higher um, social like likability with him or something like that. But mm -hmm. that's down the road. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's really fun overall. It definitely needs work. You can tell right off the bat, but it has really fun cooking mini games um, that I'm terrible at, by the way. <laughs> terrible <laughs> at. I got a 14 and a 17 out of 100. <laughs> how do they? <laughs> how do they compare the cooking mini game? How does that compare with Kinseed's cooking mini games? Oh, those Kinseed I'm familiar hands, with. Like, yeah, those are. I mean, those are far and above better for sure, for sure. Kinseed's um, are. Yeah, Kinseed's are way better, um, but they're not as these ones are more repetitive. They're smaller um, because you're in an environment where you're cooking in a kitchen in a restaurant mm -hmm. for customers right then and there. So that in itself is making it different. So you have to have a lot smaller scale games. You can't have the same scale of games that Kinseed has. Mm -hmm. And there's currently at least not batch cooking that I could find, um, which I think they should add um, as a skill, maybe farther down. But um or like kitchen prep or something for like salads and soups or something like that. But anyways, mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. But like, it's like DDR with your arrow keys Oh, for one of the games. And then another one is timing on a circle. Like you have to hit like the mark on the circle. Mm -hmm. um, and then another one is staying within the frame, kind of like um, Stardew Valley, like fishing. Like you have to like stay within... Um, the marker on a scale, like like mm -hmm. on a sliding moving scale. Um, but after you reach a certain score, like 95 or higher, you can automate it. And so, and that's for like all of the common level recipes. You automate it, which I did automatically because I'm like, I am really bad at this. And then Miracle of Miracles, one time I got 100. <laughs> it's specifically on the stove one. Um <laughs> And I was like, automate immediately <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to be giving people charcoal or automation like, saves lives. Dishes. <laughs> yes. Automation saves lives when Cozy's cooking and chef RPG. <laughs> See, I just came back from a hiatus, which is why I didn't have much to offer in the, what we are currently playing category that will soon change right. by our next one. But I've been Which, playing Travelers. Back. So happy you're back. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. <laughs> um, so I've been playing Travelers Rest. Um, my subscribers mm -hmm. love it. I love the game. Mm -hmm. Another early access that's done very well. Um, and then you've been playing Kinseed, I see. Uh, actually, almost weekly, it seems, right? It is weekly. Yeah, I try to keep it in once once a week at least. Yeah. But you um, talk about Traveler's Rest first. You try, like, you've done a ton with it. I want to know I, like what the most recent ones are. You've done like um, how to make money. Yeah, so I, I reached year two i was level 20 was my last like major mm -hmm. stream for it um and then i started to get questions in my comments for all of my videos so i did a beginner's yep. guide of to start up um the most recent one was the 
uh, money making guide for between levels one and five, basically how to set yourself up to start making money. And then right. my first stream back uh, was two days ago, and that was more Traveler's Rest, mostly to get myself just back into streaming again. Um, it's a right. game I love, and I knew people wanted to see it. Mm hmm. And always, I started always love yeah. Traveler's Rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> There's just something with the core loop of it that is so addicting and that everything else on it is just icing on the cake. So whenever they do changes, right. whenever they do additions, you're always looking forward to something. But the core game doesn't change and the core game is so much fun. But yeah, it I just did... doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. No, it doesn't. Um, and so I started a brand new file, actually, because... The new file, I started at level five because at this point I've had a lot of requests in like, okay, so after you hit level five, when you start unlocking your inn, when you start unlocking your um, your staff, how do you make money? Because people will jump in too early to those mechanics mm -hmm. and then wonder why they're being bled dry and why they can't keep a mm -hmm. gold to save their life. So I was testing some things like different crops to grow, different recipes to use, um, right. that will, will help. So basically I'm recording footage at this point to do the next video, which is the levels five to 10 ish, the end of spring into summer, um, money guide. And then I've also had Exciting. requests. Yeah. Requests for cooking guide and requests for mm -hmm. a, um, farm animals guide as well. Ooh, yeah. That'll be a good one. Mm -hmm. You guys know how much I love farm animals. In these games. <laughs> Ranching, cat's favorite. Ranch <laughs> <laughs> I heard there was something about melons in this last one. <laughs> <laughs> was there is there gonna be a video on that? A uh, which one? The uh, melons. Oh the melons. I thought you said villains, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking no. about. Melons. You're like, who are the villains? Although, story-wise, it kind of sounds like there will eventually be villains. Yes. Other innkeeper villains, which I'm stoked about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so as far as melons go, if you want an early money tip, focus on the melons. That's for you, Jess and Jojo. That's for you. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm going to hop over and talk about Kinseed. I know we had... Uh, before Let's we started, it. we almost went into like a whole dissertation discussion about our backlogs. And you said Kinseed. Yes. That's why you've been playing it. So go ahead on that one. Oh, no. So like, I'm, I don't want to play Kinseed more than I even am right now. And I'm playing it once a week. Um, I just have, I think the reason I got started more than anything, one, because I love the game, but then two, I just have people who you know, started with me when I started the channel, the channel in what May, who just loved Kinseed. I have like a dependable group of people who are going to be there every Wednesday, Thursday with me, depending on which day it is. And we just do it to have fun. Like, it's not like, it's not for views. It's not for popularity. It's not for anything. It's just for the pure enjoyment of it. Cause it's such a good game. It's so much fun. It's so irreverent. <laughs> It's so naughty. <laughs> like, oh yeah. And but like in in a broad audience way, it's not like too far. Like it makes you cringe a little, but it's nothing like too overt or too over the top, which mm -hmm. I very much appreciate. It still keeps it in like a semi family like oriented genre. Like but not that I would recommend it for anyone under 14, but <laughs> <laughs> like 14 and up, please. But um, it's just fun. And you it has endless replayability. Like you can go and go and go. And they're still adding stuff. I love that they added to the map. Um, you know how like they added people's homes getting destroyed and everything. Yeah. Sorry. Spoilers for anyone who has not been playing or not been watching letting you know now spoilers um people's homes get destroyed periodically by like the goblins and everything like that and um i i love that they started adding on the map because once a week they'll pop up in different regions they mm -hmm. started adding it on the map and that's one of my favorite new features now is like going to those gates and like getting to fight those guys outside of like the woods you know simple wood tough wood midwood 
yeah. I absolutely love it. And um, the funny thing is, like, the people who love Kinseed are finding me. <laughs> like, like I, I can't tell you. I've had, like, three, four, five, like, plus people hop on and be like, oh, my gosh, you're streaming Kinseed? Like, I love this, and I can't seem to find anyone who's continuing to put out content. Uh, I have the same and, thing with Traveler's Rest is happening to me as well. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, the first episodes of Traveler's Rest, that I got that too. Like, because um, mm -hmm. I kept doing it after the initial launch, I think, for about four or five episodes. Mm -hmm. But then just other stuff took over, you know, <laughs> like it does. Uh, I'll still go back to it. I love Traveler's Rest. I'll go back to it any day. It's just about um how much is going on and september is crazy pants this week especially but september is crazy pants mm -hmm. actually that so, kind of but that kind of segues us into what we're looking forward to next um and i think bloomtown is the one that's everyone on everyone's minds at the moment oh my gosh bloomtown <laughs> I'm internally like screaming. I'm so excited for Bloomtown. The, the art style had Ugh. me immediately. The only thing yes. I don't, the only thing that I could see me not playing it is because I don't enjoy turn based combat, but I did enjoy the demo. I don't know how far I would get into the game, but everything else about the game, like the whole life sim aspect, is so good. So, so good. good. So good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, I like turn-based so that that to me like that's one of those things like I I love it I one of my favorite games one of my favorite games that I played I want to say like 10 plus times growing up all the way through was N64 Paper Mario oh yep and that's turn-based yes that's turn-based that was one of my go-tos I adore that I still adore it it is it is my nostalgia play hands it's, down it's kind of funny you say that because i think we're showing ages here because mine is mario rpg mario rpg and yes. chrono cross i love turn-based as a kid i don't anymore mm -hmm. as an adult but yeah um yeah i'm old <laughs> <laughs> we both are it's fine mario rpg and of <laughs> paper mario was the successor to mario rpg it was yep 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 um and which i still haven't been able to pick up uh paper mario thousand year door which re-released mm -hmm. this year on nintendo i still i have it i haven't been able to pick it up like with all of the other stuff going on but it, it'll be there it'll be there <laughs> it'll be there in the backlog uh which speaking of the backlog like i i try to use it like i try to be really intentional with my backlog um you know about the polls i have people have now like made it a goal among my subscribers to try and tie the poll really? because at first it just hack it, it, at first it started happening by accident but then people are like nah nah this is our thing now <laughs> and so they started trying to like do the poll like do the ties intentionally and it's been so funny it's hilarious every single time i never know what it's going to be i'm always surprised but i try <laughs> to pull up games <laughs> for Tuesdays that are if if there's not too many releases that that uh week or that month I try to pull up um four different games uh as an option for Tuesday um which I call it my toss up Tuesday and they are either games from my backlog that I have never played games that I have not played in a very long time that I would like to pick up again or just games that I've been wanting to play that are older games that like I just I loved it and I want to pick it up again mm -hmm. um and I'll just let let the subscribers <laughs> decide <laughs> but it's been a really good way to start like investing time into these ones that have just been there just sitting there collecting dust um and then they've been some of the most fun ones like don't starve together was hilarious and so much fun that was a multiplayer monday one though <laughs> which i'm not doing mondays anymore so <laughs> is multiplayer but, um, is your multiplayer day gone because monday's gone or yeah, I was running into too many issues mm -hmm. um, hosting and getting good quality um, while trying to stream with these games. And so I 
that was one factor. There's also just like real life factors like capacity and other things that I need to be getting done. Mm -hmm. Um, quality of the stuff that I'm putting out when I'm putting stuff out, like, et cetera, so on and so forth. So it wasn't just like a one point factor for it, but I am still going to be trying to on discord. If you're part of my, my discord, I am going to still be trying to do a multiplayer day on Monday, just later in the day. So if you want to join discord and play games with us, like all together, come hang out one of us will be streaming it on discord <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but um what about your backlog what does that look like for you so my backlog is mostly games i have played an episode or two and then just mm -hmm. other new games just came out and just took precedence um mm -hmm. i'm actually look looking at going back to them because there's just so many big games coming out and i don't none of them I'm really super interested in jumping on board with at the moment but Except my backlog, <laughs> I don't think I'm actually going to jump on board with Bloomtown. I think there's going to be, um, I don't think I'm going to like it enough as far as the combat goes. I'll definitely watch the heck out of like it. My face is like shock. My face is shock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. I know. It, it is so good. The demo no. was great. But I don't, it's not a game I'm going to stick with long enough for me to justify getting it. Um, my backlog. Fair. Uh, no, no shade. That's fair. I completely understand. I want you to. I want to make sure you're not like, <laughs> oh, Cozy, you judge me. No, no, no. I completely understand. Like we all have different things that we love. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so. also like the number of requests for Traveler's Rest edited content. Mm -hmm. So like the the new money making guide and what I just talked about earlier. I'm gonna need time to do those too as well. Right. Um, right. So my backlog is continuing Fields of Mystery. Oh, were you going to say something? Sorry. No, I was just going to say that creating videos like that, like curated videos on a topic, takes so much longer. They so much so longer. Much longer. Like you, mm -hmm. you get like an hour long video. You've spent eight hours creating that video. Yeah, probably. It takes at least an hour. Time. Yeah, I'd say about an hour or more, depending on how big yeah. the content is, just to write the script. And then you got to yep. voice the script and then you got to find the content that goes right. along with your script, like almost storyboard it basically. Yeah. Or just replay it because I, I was attempting yeah. to make a tips and tricks, which fell through. And I feel so bad. I, st I still have it that I had to start replaying just yes. to know where certain things were in, in the log of video content that I had. Mm -hmm. You know, like I couldn't take the time to pour over the 12 hours of content to find a 20 second clip. Like... Yeah, the, the reason I actually have a level five character ready to go for that first stream when mm -hmm. I came back is because I would not only played one file, but two files just to get yeah. content for my original uh, levels one to five money making guide. So absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yep. it is a time investment. And yeah, hats off to you because that's something I'm still trying to dip my toe into is editing video and video content. And like the closest I've come is like gameplay videos, you know, like of like demos mm -hmm. or just like an hour and a half of the first like hour and a half of a game or something like that. And mm -hmm. I'll have like moments that I have to pause or do other things like that. And I'll I'll have to like cut off the end and like the um beginning because i'll start too early and i'll end too, like or i'll start early and like leave space and everything like leave gaps but like that's <laughs> the extent for me right now or both voicing over something that i didn't do well mm -hmm. like but that's the extent that's all i got right now i have not like done a full on edited video and i've attempted to but it's it's a lot it's a I... lot I'm trying to think, but I don't think I actually started edited content until Kinseed came out. So I think I was um, like a year and a half into my channel before I started doing edited content. And I'm over here like, dive in at the deep end. Let's go. Hey, it works. <laughs> Four months in. <laughs> Everybody has their own, their own, uh, their own uh, path. And for me, I'm a slow yep. and steady it's just, it's just how I've always been. I need to like slowly acclimate myself before I get ready to just throw myself in. Yeah, and I like I'm, I didn't even I'm do live streams right away. Yeah, see, live streams is where I thrive. 
Mm -hmm. live streams it's like it it is so energizing and like it's fun for me that's my social yeah like, and that's you're my very, socialization you're very <laughs> social and like energetic and upbeat when you stream and sometimes i feel like i'm just like a monotone robot trying to exist when i stream <laughs> so i, I always this comment yesterday i think it was on discord like you're still the best melatonin on youtube what <laughs> Someone called you the best melatonin on YouTube still. Are you serious? Like, just so soothing. Yeah. <laughs> and weirdly, I feel like I have such a, like, loud, um, monotone voice when I talk in real oh, life. No. And it's, like, to me, it sounds annoying in my own head. So I have been getting comments about how much people like my voice and how much they like falling asleep to my stuff. And it blows yeah. my mind. I must say I was one of those people because yeah. I've been following you for what two years now probably yeah <laughs> like inspirations for me make way for cat Josh's gaming garden like those are the two like this is, those are really the two that like pushed it off and I had mm -hmm. like people who were really supportive like just like on like a friend like a social level like Migi monkey shout out to you like Jojo Jessica Tons of people from your channel, tons of people from um, Josh's channel. People have just been crazy supportive, crazy mm -hmm. supportive. And I think part of the reason for that is because I built a community prior to starting to stream. You did. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have two years of following you and I have two years, over two years of following Josh. And I was fairly active during a good portion of those two years. Mm -hmm. So... Honestly, that's only, that's the only reason I'm succeeding. <laughs> that I wouldn't say and, that's um, the only reason. <laughs> that and um, consistency. <laughs> like those are the, those are the only two. I guess I'm like semi fun to listen to sometimes. <laughs> oh, you're you're definitely fun to listen to. Consistency is a big one for streaming, though, and that's something I I know it's kind of like a an unspoken rule. Like you want to be consistent when you stream. Right. I break that. A lot um it's something i want I mean, to which respect remedy to you too because you do it for really good reasons like well, respect to you for doing that and making sure like you take care of yourself and your real life and your boundaries you know so yeah just before we go into that <laughs> half the time i'm like oh man why can't i just do something consistently i'm like oh yeah i still work a nine to five job and even mm -hmm. if even if youtube does pay out to be really good and i could quit my job over it i never will right i i yeah. will never be so big that i quit my nine to five i just don't trust it i don't trust yeah it's ephemeral like it is not it's not a concrete foundation like it could just all go up one day like that's the scary thing about it is like you could get canceled and i don't think i honestly don't think like our niche of the internet is really like that no nah. i don't See there being like a really, I think that's probably one of the smallest areas, like smallest possibilities there is, but it could like, which is one of those crazy things because it's, it's dependent on, you know, people liking you. Yeah. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. Which I like you. I think you're great. Oh, thank you. And I like you. I think everyone should like you. <laughs> and I think everyone should like you. <laughs> Follow cat, guys. Follow cat. <laughs> Follow Katsy, guys. Follow Katsy. <laughs> no, Katsy. Oh, I was just thinking that there was a time where I, I, because you were active in my channel, I didn't know how to pronounce right. your name, so I called you Katsy the whole time, and it's like, no, I it's Katsy like cozy. Yep. Katsy like yep. cozy. Follow Katsy, <laughs> and every so often yep. my brain is like, but which one was it, it again? <laughs> I know it's like. But really, is it? Is it really? <laughs> yeah. No, I completely get you. Yeah. No, and it's it's completely fair. It's a weird one. It's a weird one. So. <laughs> Speaking of but, weird, yeah. look at me trying to segue stuff. Uh, Rekka? Tell um, me about Rekka. Actually, I don't really know much about the game. As, as much as I, I've seen it, I want to play it. I don't know if I will jump on the train per se yet because i'm still trying to get back into the whole streaming and obviously the traveler's rest edited content but right what a creepy cozy looking game 
Oh, it looks I fantastic. Love, um, one of the the n kind of niches I've I've fallen into is like witchy sims. I love them mm -hmm. so much. I didn't realize I like them as much as I do until I started playing them um, on, right. on my channel. But uh, yeah. It is so chill and like the walking houses, so creepy. Mm -hmm. The walking chicken house is fantastic. Yeah, the walking I chicken love house. It so much. <laughs> yeah, this is like a Baba Yaga type of witchery. Yep. Like it's Baba not Yaga. even like the classic, like um, I wanna say like Americanized, like North North American like imagination of a witch. Mm -hmm. It is like Slavic, it is Scandinavian, like it is it, it's entrenched roots are not from North America, that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So if you guys know anything about Baba Yaga, like this is this is the basis for this game. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, yeah, it's so deliciously creepy. <laughs> yeah, I, that's like I the started, only way I can say that. I started to watch Gab Smolders play a little bit of it, and they're just like, oh, mm -hmm. creepy rumors of a witch. Yep. And like your whole, yep. it's like, I'm going to find that witch. <laughs> We're going to be that witch. Yeah. Exactly. And I think there's only about like four to six hours of gameplay right now. It is early access as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not like a whole lot there. But um, you want to know who streamed it that I was totally shocked? Who? Josh. Did he? Josh streamed Rekka. I looked at his schedule and I was like, hold up. Who's playing? What game are you playing? what because he doesn't really do like the creepy ones normally no he's like, normally like ones straight up kind farm of like sims. a noir mm -hmm. yeah he does like the farm sins or like the like, the really like lighter cozy ones i was mm -hmm. so like pleasantly surprised let me just like also say that i was so pleasantly surprised and i loved it it was such a fun stream um the parts that i watched of it it was so so good but yeah josh josh from josh's gaming garden did it and i was like yes I love that this is getting recognized. I love that he was intrigued by it. But yeah, yeah. and this is um, currently an EA. It's $17.99 USD on Steam. It came out on Thursday, so literally yesterday, the 12th. Um, and this is developed by Amberstorm Entertainment, uh, which I think this is their first game, at least, that's mm -hmm. on Steam. And then it's published by Fireshine Games, who did Core Keeper and tales of take you oh wow so yeah yeah which core keeper their 1.0 last month fantastic fantastic loving it i, I have <laughs> core keeper i have not played it since the since the early access i should do that i should definitely do that oh you should that's i'm a, a big good terraria one. fan that's a good one. so yeah absolutely you would love it you would love it you should uh hop on multiplayer on monday <laughs> we should play core keeper <laughs> Monday, Monday, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but um, yeah, so those are those are the ones that we're looking forward to. These are now that we're talking about like the ones that we're looking forward to. Yeah, that got pushed off. So Mirthwood. which one were you looking more 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 forward to? You were looking more forward to Mirthwood. Uh, I don't know if I. So so the two games we're going to be talking about here are Mirthwood and Two Pixelia, and yep. Uh, I like Mirthwood more than Pixalia at the moment because of its storybook art style, more because of the kind, because it's an RPG. Like, yeah, it's it's a life sim farming RPG um, mm -hmm. with some survival elements. And I think survival elements, depending on how they're done, kind of mm -hmm. come out of the cozy territory for me. If the survival elements are too intense, uh, I usually bail. Like, it's not fun for me. Yeah, right, um, right. Yeah, but which to you could be struck with blight. Like your crops yeah. could be struck with blight. You could get sick from some kind of like disease coming through. I think it's going to be mm -hmm. harder than Echoes of the Plum Grove. That's what I was just sure. going to say. If it's similar to Echoes of the Plum Grove, it'd be great, but we'll see. I think it's going to be a little see. bit harder. <laughs> I think they're going to be a it little bit like more. It. it seems like they're going to be a little bit more intense from, yeah. at least from the trailers and from. I did that demo like three times. I loved it. I love that demo. I have not I played the kind demo. Of like the D and D oh. intro, like Ooh. to it, where you pick like you're an aristocrat, you're a, you're a peasant, you're a noble, and it's like card format. Oh, I love D and D. I'm 
I need to play this so demo. Good. Yes, it's so good. You should definitely play the demo. Um, and then when it first came out, I think it was during Next Fest. This is what I'm talking about. I did like the three different mm -hmm. times. And I think the demo is still out right now. I don't think it's going anywhere. And I know that they're going to be doing... Anyway, sorry, I'll, I'll dive back into that in just a second. But um, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. Um, but um, yeah, and then like the background that you come from. So you're like a farmer. You're a warrior. You're this, that. And like it... One was like a rat catcher. And it depend like it will level your social skills, your farming skills, your combat skills, et cetera, so on and so forth. Um, and it was just so much fun. It was so interesting. And it starts off like you're in a war, like you're literally in the middle of a war. Your your country is in the middle of war, and you're just trying to make it to the dock, <laughs> like to wow. sail away from your continent to a new world. And um, it was so interesting and fun. And you can play to be like a good character. Like there's a morality scale. Mm -hmm. um, or you can play to be a bad character. You can steal from people. You know, like you can kill people. <laughs> and there's there's like sim style dialogue. So you can be rude as you want to people if if that's your jam. Yeah. Yeah. You can choose to be rude to people. You can choose to be kind. You can flirt. You can do whatever. You kind of like feel out what people do. You can make um rude jokes. <laughs> it's one of them. You don't like see the full on di dialogue. You just um make the choice and they kind of like have little emojis pop out. <laughs> and like they have a, either have like a negative or a positive or neutral reaction mm -hmm. to it. So, um, but yeah, it's really good. Uh, it was so much fun. I did not enjoy the art style at first, but I grew really? to love it because I like I liked the gameplay. Yes, yes. I think it's it because was a I've... little odd to me. Yeah, Go I ahead. mean, I've played Witchwood, and that kind of introduced me to that storybook art style. Um, True. It it does take a little bit of getting used to because it's it's different. Like when in this game space, we're usually used to like either pixels or like the full 3d rendered models and things like that. Uh, here we go. It, it's, it's like basically a painting that's moving. Right. Right. And I, and I do love it now. Um, I don't think I've ever, I'm trying to think of an instance where artwork or graphics deterred me from enjoying a game. And I can't think of one that had a good game where I didn't change my opinion. So really like the gameplay ultimately influences whether I will end up liking it or not. Like it'll, mm -hmm. it'll sway me one way or another. So, yeah. But um, yeah, Mirthwood, I literally two days, it was supposed mm -hmm. to be out on, oh gosh, what was it? Um, 11th, the 11th Wednesday this week. On the 9th is when they put out an announcement. Two days before it was supposed to be released is when they put out an announcement that they were going to push it back almost two months to November yeah. 6th. And I, mm, that is the only thing that left me salty. Their reasons are great reasons I fully support. Absolutely, 100%. There are certain features of the game that they're trying to add, like and get fully implemented into it. The quality is just not where they want it to be. They have some like tweaks for quality of life that they still need to make. Um, among other, like just like good reasons. It's just not polished enough. It's not where they want it to be for like that full release. Mm -hmm. But man, two days before the official release date that you've already announced, like two weeks prior to that. Yep. That, you, I mean, they put out a demo, I think, when they they re-released the demo when they announced the release date, or even before that. So it, they had, like, I want to say two plus weeks of people playing the demo and giving feedback and doing that, like, before this point. Mm -hmm. I, I would think they would have known prior to that two days before it's supposed to be released that it wasn't going to be ready and that they wanted to push it off and maybe it took a lot more conversations with like their publisher or something like that yeah about rescheduling and i have grace with it but it is still it still left me a little salty yeah and it's 
it's <laughs> hard gonna lie. it's hard yeah. for like streamers and and content creators because you kind of make yourself a schedule week to week and so you're kind of planning right days or weeks ahead in advance so you know what you're doing um so having something yep. like this comes in and blows up your schedule is you know it it's not fun it's not fun at all it can be very disruptive yeah it can be really disruptive and um frustrating but i mean like i'm more just like irked with it and i could move past it pretty quickly i just did another day of critter cove <laughs> oh no i did um kinseed on wednesday yeah i can see <laughs> like that's what I did. And um, yeah, it just, it was a lot of fun. I, I moved it and I, it, it was fine. Um, and I ultimately, it's not going to stop me from playing the game. I'm still super stoked for the game. But I do <laughs> just think that small piece could have been handled, like the timing could have been handled a little bit differently. But I do understand also having to work with your publisher and convince them, hey, please push it off. Because the publisher is there like to make sure it gets released. Mm -hmm. and make sure like that the date is firm and like you know they're they're pushing more you know and making sure if it ever gets ported that it's gets ported properly blah 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 but like they're they're not really as invested i want to say as in in the game and in the details of the game as the dev devs are yeah for sure for sure it's not their baby <laughs> it's not their baby so <laughs> not their monkey not their circus <laughs> yeah but and um but yeah so really excited about that one still looking forward to it it's going to be november 6th now instead yeah um, and then, then we have two pixelia <laughs> yes two pixelia <laughs> is like a, it's a pixel art kind of simplifies fied version of the sims basically mm -hmm. um i really yep. enjoyed the demo um they kind of forced you to take a job in the restaurant really early and i yeah. blew it so badly my first round but Did when i really? played it again i was terrible <laughs> i but i it took me a little bit to like understand what was happening um but uh, once you get the rhythm okay. of it once you get the rhythm of it it's cake but yeah this one was yeah was a lot of fun um i actually didn't know it was coming out in september because i literally was on hi hiatus for like most of august and like the first chunk of september right and i didn't make right, my right. upcoming videos or upcoming games in september video that i usually do um so i i had no idea it was slated to come out in september and so you told right. me that it was moving to next year yep <laughs> yep yep so it is and and the announcement so this is another aspect why people don't know who have been yeah. trying to follow to pixelia i follow them on discord which is how i found out about it because they made an announcement on their discord they did not make a Steam announcement. They just took it from Q3 2024, and now it's to be announced. Yep. Or something like that. Well, in their Discord, they explained why it's very similar reasons to Mirthwood. They want to add different features. They want to make sure different things are optimized. Like, they want to polish on it. It's just not there. It's just not ready, which is fair. I Again, I'm totally fair. I don't mind that. Like transparency and openness and honesty from dev teams, like here for it all day, every day. You take the time that you need to make the game the best version of it possible. Um, but they could have announced this in a better way because um, what they said is it is going to be likely released. Like the goal to be released is now between Q1 and Q2 of 2025. They specifically said March and April. Mm -hmm. But that's like that cusp between Q1 and Q2 of 2025. But they're not announcing it to the vast majority of the people looking forward to the game. They're yeah. announcing it to maybe 20% of the people who are following the game on their Discord. Oh, instead I'd... of making... Oh, go ahead, I'd sorry. I'd say 20% is high. I would say it's probably more like 5 to 10%. Because basically... I'm trying to be generous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a marketing background. Um, so what I I see here is Discord is like an end goal. There's like um in the realm of marketing, once you get someone on board, 
then you go into what's considered like a loyalty program where you get them to keep coming back to me discord right. is that it's like a loyalty program you are fully invested likely if you are in their discord you are already planning to or have purchased whatever it is um so those are your or would your like core to. audience yeah, yeah. obviously yeah. the game's not out yet but they've everyone that's in there has probably already played the demo probably has plans and ideas of how they're going to play the game when they go into it but what they're missing they're content creators <laughs> yeah yeah content creators um i'm a content creator and i only follow like three discords and those are games i've played and like they did really oh. well on my channel and so now i just keep the discord on the back server because um i don't actually know why i just have them so i know what's going on <laughs> loyalty um, yeah probably <laughs> probably like the devs know who i am <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and that, that's the only reason i follow them um i i have adhd so to have so many discord channels i would lose my mind <laughs> right right you gotta but, keep it keep it just down to what you absolutely need or want to follow yeah you know i wonder if it's something along the lines of Steam is kind of like a permanent home. You know, Discord, stuff mm -hmm. keeps moving, stuff keeps moving. You're not likely going to be scrolling back a lot because, you know, there are, a lot of conversation happens all the time. But in Steam, it's kind of like a museum of all of your posts as you go. And so, like, the most right. recent thing you're going to see is, oh, by the way, we messed up. Or is, maybe that's what I they don't... feel. Because maybe, as, yeah. as a content creator and a gamer myself, I don't, I don't see having to push your game back as a mess up it's just you know it's no. just something that happens you know it's sometimes life i mean yeah we i feel like we make plans with hopeful expectations like mm -hmm. as creators we make plans with hopeful expectations i know that my to-do list is usually like i'm only doing about 75 to 50 percent of it i don't announce all of it but like i on my to-do list that i make like i make a weekly like little thing mm -hmm. with like videos i like to make etc so on and so forth it is a hopeful expectation of what i will actually be able to achieve do i ever i don't know if i've completed it a single time i don't know if i've actually gotten every single thing i wanted to do done a single time like <laughs> and i can't imagine like the scale that you have to like make that larger to do that for a full game mm -hmm. because then you're like getting input from people in alpha beta in early access in your demos of suggestions of how things are not working of bugs and errors and stuff that you have to fix but also things that you want to add on also things you want to refine like or tweak or whatever and so i don't know if i've ever come across like a game that's done by indie devs that comes out exactly when they tell you t that it's going to. Mm -hmm. Even my time at Sandrock had a like a, a month pushback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's so common. It's I've just a thing. A single one. Yeah, it's just a thing, and it's it's an expectation. Like maybe it shouldn't be, but I I am fine with it. I know what I'm getting into. I know what to expect with that. And some mm -hmm. of these like I'm fully supportive of them taking the time they're small teams they're people Usually, who haven't yeah. done like done games like this before to this scale you know like they're some people some dev devs are like doing the publishing as well mm -hmm. you know like it's it's a hard thing it's a learning curve it's a constant learning like every single day and i am fully supportive of them taking their time to make a quality game don't push it out before it's ready yeah don't don't um don't be coral island sorry <laughs> you had to throw a jab in there sorry. didn't you Ooh. I, do, I love coral island okay me too you know i, I felt love that coral burn. island i felt that burn but but you mean the releasing half know. of the game at 1.0 is that what you're we talking all about no that game wasn't finished we all know so mm -hmm. don't be coral island like, and I feel like a lot of that was peer pressure and hype from the game. So I understand it because I more than likely, I more lived. than likely, more than likely peer pressure and hype is actually the stakeholders. There's probably people at the top that are looking for that That's money. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
But like, yeah. And don't get me wrong. Even if it was just like peer pressure and hype, like I was a doormat for a real long time IRL. So <laughs> I'm a recovering <laughs> doormat, guys. Same. <laughs> recovering same. people pleaser. So yep. <laughs> I completely understand. And I want, I just want you to grow. I just want you to, I want you to be stronger, you know, um, for you and for your games. That's it. <laughs> That's it. End of statement, period. That's yes. It. And now let's talk about uh, a good game that uh, we're anticipating is a good game because the last two so excited. were amazing. And that is Pethia's announcement that they're working on the third My Time game, which is My Time at Evershine. Yay! I didn't I did not think so in a million excited. years we'd get this announcement so soon. Oh, I'm no, so excited. No, because it was supposed to be Project Me, yes. the phone game. Mhm. Mm like the mobile game which yep, that went went all the way to alpha. Mhm. Mm a year and, ago. And yeah, a year ago. And then we didn't like hear anything about it yep. from then. And so um from what I understand from a video that Lexi plays games put out, another YouTuber, another streamer, um, which we will link her video down below. Yep. So that you guys can go ahead and look at this content too. She was an alpha player for my time, uh, the my time at M -E Project or ME. Me or Project, Project ME. ME. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't even like titled uh, my time. It wasn't um, yeah. for the mobile game. Um, she was an alpha player. From what I understand from her video, um, they actually pivoted because it just wasn't turning out to be what they wanted. Um, Project Me wasn't on the mobile game. They were they weren't getting the response that they wanted. They weren't getting the game that they wanted, and so they're pivoting into another My Time project which is now my time at Evershine. I 100% so, support this decision. Me too. All here for it. My hand is raised. I'm here for it. Um, but that's why, Kat, you were saying earlier, you noticed that like half of the characters from Project Me yes. are in Project, or are in my time at Evershine. Yeah, and a couple of them have had like different like, changes. They've, they've kind of aged up the one, um, I think her name is Panna. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they gave everything Rudy. They put glasses on him. I support, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> glasses all the way. Um, yeah. There's <laughs> and also at least I support half the, the cast. Age up. Yeah, I like I like a not twenties or teens character for sure. I that's like a we're thirty old. plus. That, that's because we're old. <laughs> We're the ones we with money, though. We, <laughs> we're the ones yeah, with exactly, money. exactly. <laughs> Give me my age-appropriate thirst, people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't. I mean, and it doesn't have to be every game. Just come on, give me one. Give me one I, NPC. I agree. Okay, so give I've been playing. One. I've been playing World of Warcraft, and there's a brand new character that they added. Um, uh -huh. His name is Dagrin, and I simmed mm -hmm. from him the, f the very first day. I was like, this, <laughs> hell yeah. And just a couple of days yeah, I ago, like I, need I to learned Google Dagrin. <laughs> I learned from the lore. He's a, he's a half mm -hmm. dark iron dwarf, half bronze beard elf, or bronze beard dwarf. Um, he's canonically 17 years old. And I was like, nope, nope, all done. No. Done. Blizzard. You need to be up front, okay? He looks like he's 30. Please let him be 30. That's mean. It's so just mean. mean. He is they a... They you hard. But right? he is like the brains of the operation. No 17-year-old knows how to fix millennia-old water pipes, okay? Yeah, no. There's no way. There's no way he is 17. He has not studied yeah. that much to know. Okay? Errol from Fields of Mystria. Errol. <laughs> Errol from Fields of Mystery. Errol, he's the very fancy elderly gentleman with a fabulous mustache. Oh, okay. Who runs the museum. Yes. Um, I have some hard Errol simps. Yeah. And <laughs> we have some hard Errol and Ulrich. Um, oh yes, I remember and Ulrich. Hayden. 
thirst. We have some hard <laughs> thirst, and only one of those three is an eligible NPC. <laughs> um, and it's the youngest one. It's the youngest one. He's actually the middle one. I'm sorry. Hayden's in the middle. Ulrich is the youngest one. My bad. Oh, is he? My bad. Yeah. I think he's probably like late 30s, early 40s. If I had to age him out, Hayden, the rancher. Mm, yeah. So, um, but yeah, but there's some hard thirst for Errol <laughs> in people who subscribe to my channel. There's some hard thirst for Ulrich, which I'm on that train too. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> like, I remember that. I mean, he at least seems like late 20s, but he's the most lovable himbo. He really is. He's just the most lovable himbo. <laughs> like he's just so precious um i just i just googled fields of mystery at ulrich to remind myself what he looked like and the, <laughs> one of the top the top search result is a reddit that says why can't i date ulrich in all caps <laughs> <laughs> like i feel like they're getting probably so much pressure in discord or not discord because they don't have a discord um but like in steam like in the discussions mm -hmm. <laughs> probably getting so much there is so much thirst for Ulrich I would be genuinely surprised if they don't eventually make him a romanceful NPC and I would actually be a little disappointed yeah I mean honestly, Fields of Mystery is also early access right yes yes I mean it doesn't feel like it for the first year but yes it is still first oh. but it is still early access that is like that's like the pinnacle of early access games like i don't think i've played a game that feels more finished that's in early access than probably fields of mystery that's probably like the that is like the top echelon oh yeah absolutely like because the first year it doesn't feel like it's early access you can get through the entire first year almost like and it doesn't feel like it's early access but after the first year that's when the story kind of like tapers off and you can't do any more romancing with your characters and mm -hmm. all that but like prior to that point nah feels like a finished game so extreme polish extreme polish better than a lot of like full release games <laughs> after that i think that's kind of all we have for today what's a, like i think the next one we're going to be doing is probably going to be on delightfully spooky cozy ga or cozy games Yes. Is that kind of what our next topic is going to be? Yeah. What yeah. What is considered a cozy game, and can cozy games be horror? Mmm. Yeah, yeah, can cozy, cozy games, games be creepy? Like, yeah. <laughs> probably not for everyone. <laughs> but Absolutely not for everyone. But there's but we're going to hold that off until later. later. We're going to hold that yes. conversation until later. Yes. <laughs> but, um, like, do do cozy guys... games have right. to be wholesome? Yes, that sort do of they thing. have to be? Do they have to be wholesome? Let us know. Let us know in the comments below. Because then there's Graveyard Keeper. <laughs> oh, I love Graveyard Keeper. But anyway, I yeah, that's where it. we're going to end this. Yep. yep, yep, that's the end. That's the end, guys. Thank you all so much for coming and listening to the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> we're, first podcast. we're aiming to do this every other week. So like twice a month is yeah. our goal. Yep, yep, yep. And thank you, Kat, for... Um, circling back around like we kind of mentioned it in passing yeah in like a joke did. kind of like a joke fashion yeah we kind of like joked about it when we did um ever after fall mm -hmm. but um thank you for circling back around and uh inviting me because i'm thrilled and i love it and it's so yeah. much fun <laughs> i'm so glad you were like yeah let's do it <laughs> yeah let's go <laughs> hit the ground running <laughs> all right that so, is it for thanks. us Thank you guys yeah. so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Yep. See you then. Bye, guys. Bye.